Hello, my lovely anatomist and physiologists. Welcome back. Our conversation for this video is about capillary exchange. So we're finally getting to like the heart of the cardiovascular system. And I'm just doing a play on words here, right? Because in this case, we're looking at the capillary, not the literal heart. And what I mean here is that the whole like purpose of the cardiovascular system is to transport oxygen and nutrients and hormones to our tissues and then pick up metabolic waste and carbon dioxide gas from our tissues and all of that like dropping off and picking up is happening at the capillary right that's our exchange and we see that there's two like a mechanisms that's happening right because we are very much getting we are very much doing like a drop off at the capillary and we are very much doing like a pick up at the capillary right or we could think of this as like an exit and then to some extent, we're doing what we can think of as a re-entry, a re-entry into the capillary. Okay, when we talk about movement at the capillary, it's all about pressure and we're moving with pressure gradients. And so we are still seeing this concept of going from a high pressure to a low pressure. And what we'll see is that filtration is happening because you have the um, you have a high capillary high capillary pressure and you have a low tissue pressure and here tissue we're talking about just the tissue in the body, right? And then with reabsorption, we have the opposite. We have a high tissue pressure. And we have a low capillary pressure. And so filtration is talking about stuff exiting or leaving the capillary and moving out to your tissues because it's going from a high to a low pressure. And in the case of reabsorption, we're going the opposite direction, right? We're going back into the bloodstream. And so this is helping to pick up those waste products and so forth. And so with reabsorption, we see, again, we're moving along our pressure gradients from high to low, but it's gonna switch, it's gonna switch. When we talk about pressure in the body, we are gonna be talking about hydrostatic pressure. And the hydrostatic pressure, you maybe first um, talked about this when you talked about osmosis. This is the pressure of a liquid in an enclosed space. And consider it, your blood is a liquid and it's in the enclosed space of your circulatory system. It's in a network of tubes and there's a pump as part of that network, right? So you have liquid in an enclosed space and then you add in this heart pump, which is pushing the blood through that network, right? So we're creating quite a lot of pressure. And we've been talking about that as we go through. Now we can actually really name the pressure in the circulatory system as the capillary hydrostatic pressure, capillary hydrostatic pressure um, or CHP. And so when we're talking about the capillary hydrostatic pressure, we're talking about the pressure of the liquid in the enclosed space, specifically of the capillary of the capillary. What we're gonna see, let's just draw this out. I think it's gonna make the most sense. So let's draw out our capillary. So I am going to make a tube. 
and this tube is going to be my capillary. And I'm gonna designate on the left-hand side that this is my arterial end. And I'm using my red pen to remind myself. And then on my right-hand side of my tube, I'm gonna call that my venual end. And so you may even want to, let's draw like a vein venual tube on the right-hand side. And then let's draw the arterial on the left-hand side, right? You can move that piece. Alrighty, now what we're gonna see happening I'm gonna use a black line as the blood is moving from the arterial into my capillary. I'm gonna see a high capillary hydrostatic pressure and that's gonna force out filtration. So I'm gonna see that the blood is leaving here. What is that high capillary hydrostatic pressure? I have a lot of pressure in the arterial system from the heart. So it's the force of the heart pushing the blood through this network of vessels. When I get to the capillary, I have either a continuous capillary where material can cross through the cells and we had those intercellular clefts and we have a lot of vesicular transport or I have a fenestrated capillary, which has all those features, plus it has those pores, those windows. And so I'm now finally at a place where stuff can leave, right? And so the capillary hydrostatic pressure is the push that's really pushing material out. As we move through the capillary, we'll see we get kind of more equalized and so we get to a point where we have like stuff is crossing, but stuff is entering and it's the same level of entry and exit. And then as we continue to move through, what we see happening is anything that can leave has left. Anything that can leave has left. And so we're pretty much down. We're pretty much down to like our plasma proteins change my marker that was hard to read we're pretty much down to our plasma proteins inside our vessel and we're down to like our formed elements I mean there's gonna of course be some other business here but we're pretty much getting concentrated we're pretty much getting concentrated once we get to that venual end of the tube. And so now we see the force of reabsorption we're gonna get is osmotic pressure. Now osmotic pressure is the pull, is the pull based on osmosis. Water moves from dilute to concentrated. And because so much of our fluid left at the arterial end, when we get down to the venual end, it's super concentrated. It's super concentrated. And so we're going to talk about this pressure specifically as the blood colloid osmotic pressure which we can abbreviate as BCOP, BCOP. Now, some of you are like, what in the world? How are we getting this name? What does coiloid mean? Coiloid is talking about a suspension of proteins. Coiloid is talking about a suspension of proteins. And in the case when we get especially to the venual end, we have mostly proteins inside the capillary. 
we have a suspension of proteins. And so based on osmosis, it's becoming very concentrated and the fluid around the vessel in comparison is very dilute. And so what we see happening is we're gonna be pulling fluid back in. And so here's the beautiful thing, we create a circulation We get a circulation. Um, I'm going to change that and say flow. We get a flow across our tissues. So you don't just have like stuff boom out soaking up your cells. You don't have your cells just like in this puddle of stuff that comes out of the blood. Instead, you have like this little nice flowing stream of blood because you have stuff leaving the arterial end flowing across your tissues and being pulled back in the venule end. Now we can actually assign numbers to this stuff. We can assign numbers to this stuff. So what you can do is at the arterial end, we'll see that the capillary hydrostatic pressure or CHP is equal to 35 millimeters per mercury, which is how we measure pressure. And then we'll see that the blood colloid osmotic pressure is going to be lower. It's going to have like a, a 25 millimeters of mercury, right? And so what we see is we have a net filtration pressure of 10 millimeters per mercury, meaning we have a force pushing fluid out of the arterial end. So we can call this our net filtration pressure, which is talking about this relationship between these two pressures. If you have a positive number, you have filtration. So let's put this up here. So we're gonna have a positive uh, net filtration value. Over here, if you have reabsorption, you're going to have a negative net filtration value. Let's look at what happens around the middle of the capillary bed. Around the middle of the capillary bed, you actually get a net filtration pressure of zero. <laughs> So around the middle, you've lost like quite a bit of stuff. You don't have a pull to really get a whole lot in. So it's kind of equalized. But then as we get towards the venual end, we see a flip. So towards the venual end, we have a um, capillary hydrostatic pressure has dropped. So it's at 18. And then the blood colloid osmotic pressure has increased, so it's at 25. And you're just doing a subtraction. So you're subtracting the blood colloid osmotic pressure from the capillary hydrostatic pressure. So that's how we're getting this negative value of seven, negative 10, excuse me, negative seven millimeters of mercury um, as, the, as the reabsorption force, as the blood osmotic pressure force pulling material back in, pull stuff back in, okay? Super important, we have this nice flow. Hey, okay, let's add in one more like piece of detail that's gonna matter as we move into the future. So really side by side with your um, blood capillaries, you have what are called lymphatic capillaries. And the lymphatic capillary is pretty funky looking. It looks kind of like it's described as a blind pocket. So this is my lymphatic capillary. And what we'll see is as you have material leaving the capillary flowing across your tissue, some of that material actually moves into the lymphatic vessel. And so it's also pulling some of that water, some of that um, waste material and so forth is also helping to create this flow across your tissues. And so even though we're seeing a lot of material leaving and we're seeing stuff being reabsorbed, of course, we're reabsorbing less, right? 
because some of that is being taken up by our tissues and some of that is moving into our lymphatic vessels. All right, up next, let's talk about blood pressure. And as always, take care of yourselves and each other.